Hey, what's up? It's James again, here to show you how to make bass drum, snare, hi-hat, and possibly a tom um, at the end of this. So before we got into this, I kind of wanted to go over a couple things. Um, there are going to be some things that are going to be different about your synthesizer that are different than mine. So it's always important for you to uh, go through your instruction manual and learn all the different functionalities of your synth. We're going to be using a pitch fin today on an envelope. Loosely, that's pretty um, usable from just the front panel of your synthesizer, but some um, may be harder. So I try to keep these under 20 minutes, so I'm going to try to run through this pretty quick. Um, let's start with the kick drum. So you want to initialize the sound. Uh, initialize is loosely marked by I-N-I-T somewhere on your front panel. If it's not, then it should be in your load screen. It just gets you the basic sound, um, turns everything off besides just that one oscillator, opens up your, your uh, filter, your envelopes, and all that kind of stuff. So I want you to get to a sound wave. Once you get your sound wave in, um, we're going to go to the envelopes, and we're going to want to change our envelopes down to a pluck kind of sound. So what's going to be is a little bit of decay, no release, and that kind of stuff. You're going to get a little click sound. Turn your uh, attack up enough that you don't hear the initial tap click. So you know, like 0 0.05 or whatever. Um, so you want to change your amp. When you go back to your filter, you're going to want it to be the same. We're going to be using the filter envelope today. Um, take all your release off. And you're going to want your like your original amp page. I'm just going to give you this sound. Which uh, doesn't sound a lot like a kick, but it's got the starting characteristics of one. So after we get that, we're going to run over here to the filters. I'm going to pull the cut off back. Give it more of a little tom. I like to turn the resonance up a little bit because we're going to be sweeping. Give it that, uh, that punch to it a little bit. So after you get all that set up, um, I guess go back to your, your filter envelope and add in a, uh, or patch it to your pitch destination of your oscillator 1. You're going to want to mess around with this a little bit. You can kind of hear the little click you got there, right? Now we're going to adjust the uh, filter envelope. So you're getting a more punchy sound now. I like to turn my uh, oscillator 1 down to 24 in the tone, so it's like two octaves below. Give it that sub bass kind of kick. So from here, you've got, you got your basic kick sound. You just want to dial it into the right. Area with the right resonance. From here you have your basic kick, right? So there's a lot of things you can do to modulate this sound. So if you wanted a more aggressive kick, you go back here and change your oscillator into a uh, sawtooth. Square. Or you can go in here and add some, a uh, little bit of distortion, a little bit of reverb. It'll uh, Definitely get the punch in there a lot more with the, the distortion. You don't want to overdo it because you want it to sound like a, a non-distorted kick. So you want it to just be a slight amount. Then just push up your uh, all your bass frequencies within your kick. So once you got that, uh, I suggest that you save it um, to your synthesizer. Um, I usually also sample them too to my MPC or whatever program you're using to control your, uh, your recording. Um, 
one that I used to use when I used computers that was really good with three loops. Uh, I had a Scarlet that I could patch in my MIDI control back in here and run it to there. Um, I'll get into to MIDI stuff a little later because I feel like uh, a lot of people kind of go over that and don't teach people how to um, record any kind of uh, changes to your uh, knobs or filters or anything to your track. So instead of it being a low frequency oscillator, which will just change it automatically up and down depending on the, the sound waves um, type of the low frequency oscillator, it does it in real time. So you can uh, adjust your filter to open and close with the beat, et cetera, et cetera. But we get into a later date. So after you got that in there, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go back to your second oscillator here and you're gonna turn it to, of course, the waveforms. Throw in a noise, uh, whatever noise that your synthesizer does have. Uh, make sure you turn the oscillator up. This is gonna be our snare sound. So all you gotta do from that uh, bass sound is turn your cutoff off. One thing I already want to talk about, that's that's your basic snare sound you're gonna get. You can definitely modulate that in any way you say fit. You can uh, you can use a high frequency um, filter to pull out some of that low end if you want to, if your your synth does have that. A high pass filter, my bad. So when you pull that back in, you want that happy sound. Of the, uh, the drum sound. That being said, if you throw just a little bit of reverb on this, it's going to sound a lot better. It's way too much. I would save that into your machine, um, sample it if you want to, and then we're going to move on to the hi-hat real quick. So for the hi-hat, what you're going to want to do is you're going to just going to turn off your oscillator one, which has your uh, sine wave on it, and you're just going to have the noise. So now that you're at that point, uh, what I would do if you do have a high-pass filter is I would pull it all the way up here. cut off my, my one filter here. And you want to turn off your uh, your uh, envelope amount and the pitch amount. So from there you can do a lot of things to modulate the sound too. Um, you can change the pitch of your oscillator, the shape of your sound, you can, uh, of your oscillator too, which is your noise, or you can use a different one. Depending on what kind of hi-hat you do want. All right, so that's your hi-hat. Um, we're gonna get into the toms now, so we're gonna go back in here to uh, Filters. We're gonna take out this uh, this high pass filter because we're gonna be needing it for the tom. So I'll just start with this 12 dB low pass filter. You gotta take this uh, the noise out. Add back in your oscillator one, which is your uh, your sine wave. Tom is a lot like the kick drum, but you're going to want to turn your um, semitones up to 12. So there you have your 
your basic comp. I've saved that, sample it, whatever you want to do. So the whole reason I'm doing this is I want you to get your own um, sound set for your drums, um, for your tracks. It's really important to have your drums pitched to your tracks. So whatever um, scale you're going to use and whatever octave you're going to be in um, will affect the sound of the drum a lot. So before you even start making these drum patches, I would um, go ahead and decide what scale you're going to have your song in and start making it to um, whatever note is uh, your low note for your bass. I usually use my snare. Um, you know, the next octave up at that same note, um, I had another octave up. And toms at the very top, um, seems like high would be at the top, a hi-hat really isn't affected as much by pitch as you might think it would be. So after you get all that down and get them sampled in, then you can start making time um, and beats for your synthesizer parts that we're going to be um, coming up to in the next series. Um, I'm going to do plucks and I'm going to do pads. So if there's any suggestions you have, you can just leave them down below for uh, future videos of things you would like to learn how to make. But I'm just going to start at the basics. Um, after plucks and pads, I'll probably go on the bases uh, and leads. And then you should uh, be having a pretty good library of your own sounds that you made to start producing your own music. There are a couple different ways I see people go into synthesis. You can just copy all of the numbers that I have on my synthesizer, and that will get you the sounds that I put in, which I didn't spend a lot of time of, and don't sound great. Or you can do it where you start understanding how the ADLSR is, which is your envelopes section, how it works, and you can start learning to feel it instead of just use a number amount. A lot of people just use number amounts and then I feel like they get stuck at those numbers being the only way that you can make a pad or a bass, which isn't very true. Um, there's all kinds of modulations to this and that's kind of the point is to be able to make things that you've never heard before that you hear inside your head that you want to bring out into the world. So that being said, um, your next week's mission, if you choose to accept it, is to make drum samples of a kick, a snare, a hi-hat, and a tom every day for the next week. And make them as different as possible, like make some of the uh, kicks with a sawtooth um, oscillator with a square rate wave. You know, make some of them overdriven so they're like a, you know, a heavy kick. Make some of them more of a lighter, more natural kick. You know, for whatever types of music that you're into. And after those seven days, you'll have seven different drum um, machines, basically, at your disposal and you can use for your tracks. Anyway, uh, I hope you like this. If this brought any value or you learned anything about synthesis from this, if you could hit the like and subscribe button, that would be great. Uh, if you have any questions for me or suggestions, you can just leave me a comment below. Uh, thanks. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.